Colin, okay. <laughs> this is going to be a good set. I mean, this is, this is what Oceania was saying uh, at the beginning of the tournament. All they have to do is win. Well, that's all on them this time around. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first contestants here in the 1v1. It is going to be representing OCE, Radier, the legend himself from Oceania, going up against Celebrity. We have AD Carry versus AD Carry. This is going to be quite exciting. Now, something that uh, Radier has been criticized for is his mechanics a little bit. He has retired from professional play. He is now a lawyer. The question is, can he use his skills of manipulation and getting to the truth to defeat his opponent? Objection, Vettius, because I think Celebrity, you can levy some of the same criticisms at him. He's definitely uh, had a few troubles in mechanics, but ADC versus ADC should be a pretty balanced matchup. Curious to see Caitlin, if actually Caitlin, Caitlin maybe. Or uh, I, I maybe really your specialty, Urgot VMF. Why are you <laughs> revealing all my secrets? Ur Urgot <laughs> is a fantastic choice uh, in any situation, just like pretty much any role. But in 1v1, obviously, like, you know, you don't need to I mean, to you won, didn't you, Barry? You won. I did, I did, yeah. Well, now, now the, the entire balance. world knows about it. But <laughs> I think also you, we could see some of the Ezreals, uh, an MF might come up, but there is always the threat of the Tom Kench. That's always a possibility. I mean, <laughs> the Tom Kench took me by surprise. It took a lot of people yesterday. by surprise. I was like, surely Tom Kench can't be that good. And then Twice. he went for the all-in with the snowball, too. Yeah. And to, speaking on the snowball, we haven't actually seen very much usage of it, uh, which surprises me a little bit. Perhaps if we see more melee champions come through, it would be more effective. But the only real melees we've seen are things like Nasus, who has primarily gone for the, I'm going to farm and go for 100 CS, or maybe they just try and outkill a LeBlanc. I mean, yeah. one or the other. 1v1s are very unpredictable. We have no idea what entirely we're going to see um, because there is no real established meta other than let's ban Caitlyn, let's ban Syndra, let's ban all the really strong stuff. Try to kill the opponent, or if you can't kill it, just go ahead and get all the farm if you possibly can. We've even seen a few towers close to falling down, but we're going to load into the champion selection each side, the three bands. It's going to be Lucian. Raider doesn't want to be giving that one away. Lucian's quite an interesting ban. Um, Caitlyn's still available, Cassiopeia is still up as well. The reason why I think Lucian's a little bit surprising is because he's had so many hits um, yeah. for quite a long time. This one's a little more expected though. The Tom Kench, they're not really going to give yeah. him a chance. Velkaz, we did see it win a game that Saros, wasn't against Saros the Saros brought it out. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um, and that actually went to 100 CS. It was quite close in terms of farm, but the Velkaz and the Draven couldn't actually kill each other. Uh, it was close, though. It was very close. It just came down to a last uh, few CS that really decided it. Okay, so the Caitlyn's banned away. So now a couple of AD carries hit, but Caitlyn much more expected. We still could see the Ezreal. Yeah, Miss Fortune still up to we Cassio. We Corky played. I, I wasn't a huge fan of it, to be honest. Yeah, uh, we saw a lot of Corky earlier <laughs> yeah, on in the day. I wasn't a huge fan of that, that either. That was a little bit too much to Corky. Um, but we did also hear the analyst talk a little bit about possibly Lee Sin. Yes, coming out later on in the one versus one tournament. Yeah, don't but it's still here. something that could come out. Uh, quite an interesting ban running So out. this is actually something I think is, is super legit in the 1v1 because you can just max yeah. blinding dart and then if the enemy takes something that's like auto attack based, they literally can never touch you. Yeah, I suppose that's true. Um, but, well, we won't be seeing it today, Pyro. It no, has been taken this, off the board. Not this round, anyway. I thought that maybe he was trying to spell something funny, um, but LVT. Um, he needs an F instead of the V band. So looking, looking for, for team. team. Yeah, LeBlanc, okay, there's band away. That's nice. Um, but Radier is going the best strategy. Well, now, don't talk about hovers. It, hovers, don't talk about hovers. You know the bait, Pyra. Uh, they they always like to try and catch you by surprise. Well, I don't believe the Callista. There's no point to take that. Nah, it, it, you couldn't really bind it with anyone. I mean, she still, now, well, you say that last year in the wild card, she was fairly successful. I believe it was Prey. It's though, too. Prey did bring it Callista out. Callista yes, was a lot stronger true. at that very point. Very true. Um, but there we are, Barry. Your yes. Urgot yes. has been locked in. So, oh, excellent. As the resident Urgot expert, why don't you run us through some of his strengths? All right. Well, the big point about Urgot is that once you're able to nail your Eon, you can start just launching Acid Hunters, yes. and you can pop out the bush. You can pop out. He has a really, really good range he does. once he's actually locked on, and the Terra Capacitor gives him an extra bit of stats so he can stand up one and one. Uh, that's the big draw for Urgot. He's I not like particularly mobile. He's not particularly. Uh, Stronger in just like a pound for pound matchup, but you just need to land the E and then you can start launching. You can hide behind the mini wave and you can get your 1v1 finish but without his, being in danger. His ult, too. I mean, you have yeah. those sneaky plays where if maybe if they it. get a little bit too close to the turret, Callista does have a fairly short range. If she's trying to get the shove on up against the Urgot, you could punish it with a sneaky ultimate and then, hey, you're underneath my turret. You know, like, yeah, there are all sorts possible. of outplays. But um, Callista actually going for the exhaust ignite. Now, this is very risky against an Urgot because you know, as you're rightly saying, that uh, as 
Acid Hunter can be very devastating if you can actually set up for that uh, for true. that damage. True, but you do have the sidestep ability, so you can dodge out a oh, little yeah, bit of the range true, of the yeah, AoE. Yeah. I'm still a little concerned, though, because this ultimate just will not be utilized at all, so you're down one spell from the get-go. Yeah, but that means you can max rend faster, Pyro. That's, that's very true. <laughs> you don't need to actually take your power, yeah. <laughs> I guess I guess that's a trade-off, so that's yeah. pretty good. I mean, I'm curious to see how it works. It's the first time we've seen the Callista the 1-1 this year, uh, and, uh, well, not the first time we've seen the Urgot, just in professional play. Yeah, just in professional. Well, we did actually see it the other day come out victorious. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. I'm totally wrong. Yeah, it did. Right, well, we're to gonna work find out. out. But here we are, again. ladies and gentlemen. Oceania, Oceania's last hope, and they've put two European casters on. Yes. <laughs> uh, a bit of an odd uh, thematic choice here, as Radio is going to run straight for the front. Celebrity, and celebrity face checking. Here we go. Autos. Oh, he puts the exhaust on early. No ignite spent, but he's gonna use it now. Celebrity has to rent early. There is the counter exhaust. Celebrity's gonna have to back after that. So that was smart from Celebrity. Held onto the exhaust until his had ran out. He wanted to see whether or not Radio was gonna go for the all in. And once he realized, yes, Raid is coming for me, he then used his exhaust, bought him enough time to disengage, so that I can go back to base with a summoner spell advantage. Remember, the key for OPL right now is they need to win three out of five. They just need to win this entire thing. It doesn't matter about the timing so much because they would have the winning head to head. However, for Team Fire, for SCA, they need to not only win, but they need to do it very fast or win very convincingly. So win they cannot afford games, four, yeah. four, at least four. They, they cannot afford to take their time with this one. So Celebrity is already going to be pushed a little bit further back, but he does have that Ignite advantage. Now, I'm curious as to the maxing order that Celebrity is going to go for. Will he take a couple early points in? in his W, or will he just go straight for the QE sort of max? Because you have to remember that you cannot proc the second mark of the W without a teammate. So you only really have two abilities that you can take full advantage of, Fyra. Yeah, and you can't even use all your item slots, but uh, I don't think we'll get to that point, fortunately. Well, we'll have to wait and find out. Is the initial harassment coming out from Celebrity yeah, level two? he's getting quite a Ignite. few spears stacked in there. He's just got to close that distance, but there's no flash. Woo. He's just going to have to rend. That's going to be Radier backing off, and now the advantage is Callistus. Great start for Celebrity. You can see the two teams. <laughs> OPL already feeling the pressure. Uh, but still, raid it. Oh, he decided not to go back. Needs to pick up this very important farm. And this is actually great for him. Remember the turret damage that always catches me off guard. Miss those minions, though. Yeah, it's very harsh when you get shoved underneath your turret. It can be so devastating. He's low. If Celebrity... Well, he's low as well. But if Celebrity gets the jump on him around the side, lands a couple of... Stacks and then is able to all in him. Now that is a timely spawn of the health relic. Level three now for both AD carries. Raider looking to posture aggressively. Look at the mana pull for Celebrity. Okay, not a whole lot left in the tank there, but Celebrity's gonna run forward, hit the rend. Last second, he needs some mana and he's gonna walk back towards the health relic. Raider's still playing with fire here. He certainly is, but he's mindful of the fact that his summoner spells will come up before Celebrity's will. So he's just playing around the fact that, hey, I know you're gonna have exhaust the same time as me, so you're not likely to hard commit. And let, um, until my summoner spells are up, right? Right, so. and they're keeping themselves within striking distance in the CS. So you just kind of sit in this holding pattern until you have your summoner spells available. Celebrity can't take advantage of that window. Uh, and he'll be able to keep on pushing. It's kind of the same thing we saw in uh, your 1v1. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so for those interested in the expertise of the 1 versus 1, Radier has decided to put two points in his Q and only one point in the E so far. Celebrity is looks like he's actually just maxing out uh, the Ren. But now, yeah, so he's only taken points in his Q and in his E. So there's no point taking the W. You can't get that much effectiveness out of it. And you can see Radier feeling like, hang on a second. I'm so <laughs> this is all screwed up. Why does the tower do more damage? But it looks like he's getting the feel of it now. Yeah, it takes a little while to get used to, but uh, even though Radier had given up a bit of farm, he's still only two down. And as Celebrity backs, you see he does the very conventional strategy of picking up as many swords as he yep, can buy. Yeah, that's what you want to do. Uh, ooh, interesting that Radier's actually decided oh. to go for a bit of cloth armor. Well, this is part of the advantage of Urgot. He, he can be a little bit tankier. He hasn't actually put... Actually, now he has put a point. Uh, into his Terra Capacitor, so he'll have a little bit extra shield. Obviously, it scales more off mana, but you add a little bit of armor in the mix, and it's it's hard to calculate exactly how much Celebrity needs to all in. It also makes sense to put points in it uh, as well, because while you've got the shield on, your Qs also apply a slow, too. So you get that extra bit of CC. It makes it easier to do even more damage. So uh, stacking that up, putting an extra point in that, will give you a slight, slightly less damage than the Callista, simply because she's got more points in her damaging abilities. Um, but overall, it does benefit Urgot's entire trade path. Yeah, but you just keep an eye out for the Noxian Corrosive Charge. If he's able to land it on Celebrity, just like that, he can start to fire a couple of unlock hits, and it even makes it easier to farm a little bit. So Celebrity's going to have to be really quick on the footwork, try and dodge around, but you can see neither of them are super interested in all inning yet, despite the fact that they do have 
both of their summoner spells available, waiting for that level six, at least for Radiant. I mean, the problem for Radiant right now is that his mana pool is actually very small, and uh, he's only level five, hasn't actually taken any additional AD items other than the Doran's Blade, which means that his Q actually doesn't even do that much damage for the time being. And with Celebrity sitting in the farm lead, he's feeling pretty comfortable for now. Yeah, Celebrity's able to just keep farming it up. It's only three CS, but that can mean the difference at the end of the day. Raider, intense concentration on his face. Same for Celebrity. It's all on the line here for both these teams. They need victories to push themselves ahead. I gotta say, Rusty was not kidding when you look at Raider's posture. That is one keen and focused man. I mean, look, he's... That is how you play video games. I mean, that is a healthy way to do it. I mean, I'm always slouching. I'm basically my entire body's over the screen. But, like, that is some pristine posture right there. Very good example of uh, the proper thing to do. And, uh, well, Raider's going to have to back off. Still three CS down. Let's see what he picks up. I would like to see a little bit of mana, at least mana regeneration, but he's not going to get the chance yet. He's been stopped by Celebrity. This is the problem. He's been taking a lot of poke from the Ren stacks that uh, Celebrity's been doing a great job of stacking. Raider, you need again. to be careful. That was a greedy back. It he needed to step was. way behind this turret way earlier. And now, look at how much CS he's going to lose over this. I mean, he might just stick around to pick up the farm. No, he, he's going to commit. He's going to go back, pick himself up that Glacial Shroud. There we go. So that's going to give him the extra mana and a little bit of CDR so he can launch a few more of his, uh, not, not only Noxian Crossing Charges, but his Acid Hunters. Yep. And uh, he has actually decided to take a point in his ultimate, which I feel like this early on is a little bit surprising, but I guess he feels like he wants to use it for the all-in potential. Uh, oh, yeah, it's all bait. I mean, you have to respect the distance he can he can close. We've seen Urgot's time and time again do it. Just right under the tower. It can make all the difference. Six so and a half actually, minutes. Uh, interesting that Callista decided to stick around, wanted to wait for a bit more gold to pick up the Phage. So now Celebrity has two Doran's Blades and that extra item on top, which is going to give Celebrity a fair amount of health, a fair amount of damage too, and will actually give him a bit more kite ability, which is going to be extremely valuable against this Urgot. Yeah, as long as he's able to dodge the corrosive charges, Raider's going to get at least one more pot shot off. Celebrity does grab the health relic, pierce through. He's playing dangerous games here right now. There's a level disadvantage. He's got a lot of spears sticking in him, and they're going to get pulled right on out. Can't land another Acid Hunter. Radiant definitely feels like he's on the back foot. Celebrity is just managing these Ren stacks so effectively, constantly getting out with the superior trades, always forcing Raider on the back foot. And even though he's able to land a few of these Acid Hunters, Celebrity's just constantly disengaging, and uh, Raider's really not getting very many advantages off the back of it. Yeah, he's missing some minions too. It's just, it's rough. The timing is a window is just not quite where it needs to be for him. So he's losing out on farm very slowly but surely. Nine CS now, the difference as uh, he can't quite land an Acid Hunter onto Celebrity. Thing is, though, in this situation, you have to realize the situation that you're in. If you're, if you're Celebrity, you can say, I can just keep playing the way I have been because I have the farm advantage, but it looks like they're going for the all-in. Yeah, that's the Ignite. Raider's going to pop his ultimate. Celebrity just doesn't care about it. Double exhaust, but he just needs one more shot. The red is not enough. Takes his tower shot, but it forces Radiant back. So, that's pretty good for Radiant. Both summoner spells have been used by Celebrity. He's going to try and clear this farm out as quickly as he can to get back to base and pick up a bit of extra gold. But Radiant, you can see how difficult it is for him to win out in these extended trades because Celebrity is just getting stacks of Rend over and over and over again. And Radiant, just if he misses a single E, that really does punish his ability to trade back. Yeah, he's just hammering him right now, and, and the CS is starting to grow even further apart. Radiator is scuttling as fast as he can back to this tower to just try and get the minions right off of it. Health Relic's still available on both sides of the map. He really should be picking that further one out while he has a moment, but he's just going to stall out the wave. Pickaxe has now been picked up for Celebrity. Double Longsword for Radiator, but the key thing to note is the severe lack of health potion. Celebrity actually stuck around a little bit longer and he's changed it for a Vampire Acceptor. I think this was a smarter decision. You need the sustain, especially with the amount of poke the Raider is able to throw out, especially if you've got no health bots to keep you alive. And now with this Vampire Acceptor, you can just play the farm game. You are eight CS ahead. Unless Raider can force you back, it is extremely unlikely that you're gonna lose in terms of farm. And so Celebrity, he just has to play the waiting game at this point. Yeah, it was a nice launch from Radier to try and get a little bit extra damage, but unfortunately, as he didn't clear the Health Relic, Celebrity is able to recover much of it. He has the Lifesteal available to him, and Radier can't really afford to let this wave just keep pushing by itself anymore. The farm game is going to go in favor of Celebrities. Radier needs to find an answer that Ignite will be key if he's able to punish the window. The question is, can he get close enough? Because Celebrity's been doing a great job of just keeping Radier at arm's length. He's 
stacking up those Rens onto a single target, then passing it over to Raider, popping them for a nice trade that Raider isn't using his shield in time for. And it's just constantly going in the favor of Celebrity. So right now, the wave is pushing towards Celebrity's turret. This is a good opportunity for Raider because if he can just land that the EQ combo, he can force Celebrity away from the turret. And we've already talked a lot about how the turret is so devastating at clearing away these minions and how much harder it becomes to farm underneath the turret. Yeah, and he's even able to sort of predict that Celebrity's going to try to gun for the big minion, the big cannon creep, and he's able to launch an Acid Hunter onto him, or rather add for Nox and Crow. So just keep on pushing, keep on pushing, force him back from this tower. And he has caught up in farm, but there's a big wave here. Celebrity can grab it all. Dodging out, Ooh, still nails dodge. one Acid Hunter. Really good dodge from Celebrity, but look, he's now been forced under turret. All Raider has to do is actually keep him away from farm, and he might be able to get ahead in the farm department. Oh, now it's dead even. Raider has done a fantastic job. All he has to do is not miss a single farm right now and they can play for 100 CS. Raider has somehow managed to close the gap, and who would have thought that this could very well come down to who has the better last hitting ability? And I mean, for 280 carries, what's more suitable? Oh, he missed one though, he's down two. This is so tense right now, Vettius. Raider is a little lower on the health. He's got his Ignite, but now so does Celebrity, and the exhaust is not quite back up for him yet, so the window is actually in favor of Celebrity. He's gonna nail oh, that last minute, but now it's a rush. This is huge, Pyro. Neither AD carry can afford to go back. You just have to force your opponent to miss a single CS, and that could be the determining factor, but there's pretty much only one wave left in it for Celebrity. Oh, man, this is oh so close. Cannon Creep gets taken. Raider is going to be able to find that last one, but Celebrity, he just keeps pushing him back. He's got enough spears in it right now. Raider's a little bit low. There's a, that Ignite. You've got to be careful. Is this really going to come down to a kill after it's all said and done? He's oh! got all the tower range. Celebrity, he's exhausted. He's ignited. But there's so many oh, the rares, and it's first blood. Victory for Celebrity. Oh, Raider, you came so close. It was 96 farm to 93 in favor of Celebrity. You could have just made the decision. It doesn't matter if I'm behind and